what is going on you guys welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to talk about how to pass data between multiple table views so here you see we have a table of some generic categories and we tap on let's say fruits we get a list of fruits when we tap on cars we get a list of cars uh, so on and so forth so we actually have uh, some structs that have multiple types of data and we're, we've created this reusable list here, and we can basically pass in data to this other table uh, by using some cool interactions and uh, ways that we're, techniques we're gonna learn in this video. We're also gonna learn how to continuously show more lists. Uh, if you wanted to build an app like settings, for example, or uh, anything else, there's a lot of list-based ideas out there. So that said, make sure you destroy that like button for the algorithm as always. Hit subscribe while you're at it if you haven't done so already. Open up Xcode and let's jump right in. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, so we're gonna get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We're gonna stick with a single view application and I'm gonna go ahead and call this project uh, table view pass data. Go ahead and create it and save it wherever you'd like. I'll throw it on my desktop. And first and foremost, let's pick a simulator and hit that run button to get this guy good, ready and good to go over here. And let's jump into our main.storyboard to start. So we're gonna work uh, entirely in code but one thing that we're going to tweak a little bit just to make this look nicer is select this view controller and hit editor. And we're going to say uh, embed in navigation controller. And that'll put this controller in a navigation controller and also give us this bar up here. Click on the bar and give it a title of home. And now we can go to our view controller and we can get started. So first and foremost, uh, we want to set up a basic table view. So we're going to say uh, private let table view uh, is a UI table view. And in here, we're going to create the table view in an anonymous closure. So go ahead and create it like that. You can do return table. We're going to want to register a single cell to the table. So we're going to say table view cell dot self. And we're going to use cell as the ID make sure to add this table view as a sub view and we also want to give this guy a frame so we can actually show up on the screen so we're going to say table view uh, dot frame looks like we have an error somewhere so this is saying return table can't return it because this is supposed to be a table view and autocomplete decided to not be helpful so that error should now go away now we're going to say the table views frame is view.bounds, which is the entirety of the screen here. And let's see, we also want to assign the table views delegate as well as the table views data source. And after that, we need to conform to both of those protocols. So I'm going to go ahead and do it in a extension down here just to keep our code more uh, modular and separated. So for the delegate, we're gonna implement did select uh, item. And the first thing we're gonna do in here is simply call deselect at the given index path with an animation. And then we wanna also do an extension on the view controller for the table view data source. And there are two functions in here that we want to implement. First one is number of rows. And next one is self for row at index path. And before we implement these, let's talk about how our data is going to look. So we're going to have a uh, array and that array is gonna hold some uh, structs 
and each struct is going to have a title and a subarray. So what do I mean by that? So we're going to create a struct called category, and let's say it has a title, and let's say it has items in it, which is an array of strings, right? So now on here, on this view controller, we're going to create a private let data, and this is going to be an array of category items. And let's create a bunch of categories. So let's say the first one is fruits. And the items would be things like an apple, no pun intended, uh, a banana, an orange, and a grape. And let's go ahead and copy and paste this, and we're going to change this up. So let's uh, do that. Two, three, it's probably enough. And let's make this next one uh, car models. Uh, this one we can say is Apple devices. Uh, we can say weather. And this one will be cities. So let's do cities. So we can do New York, Chicago, LA, and San Francisco. We'll just do SF and be lazy. Next one, we're going to say weather. So we'll say sunny. We're going to say cloudy. We're going to say rain and let's say overcast. Overcast. Uh, for Apple devices, this one should be easy. We're going to say Mac, iPad. Uh, we'll say Apple Watch and iPhone. And then this last one here for car models, let's say BMW, a Honda, a Benz, a Ferrari. Ferrari, and I don't know if it's Ferrari. That looks, there we go. That's what we want. We want a Ferrari. And what we're going to say now in number of rows, we want to show basically only the categories here. So what we're going to say here is uh, return. We're going to return essentially uh, data.count. And for the cell for row, we're going to say cell is table view and we're going to DQ a cell with the ID cell, which is the ID we used to register a cell. You're going to go ahead and return a cell down here and you're going to assign the text labels text on the cell to data. We're going to get the category out of it for that position and dot title. Cool. So we also want to get the category out when, once the user taps on a cell. So we're going to say the category is data and the given position the user tapped. So go ahead and hit Command R and let's see if we see our list of categories. Okay, awesome. We see it. So now when we tap on each of these, what we want to do is we want to pass the items for the selected category to another table view. So for another table view, what we want to do is first create another view controller. So go ahead and click on that and right click it. And we're going to create a new uh, subclass and it's going to be a subclass of a UI view controller. And I'm going to call it list view controller like that. Go ahead and create it. And we're going to add a custom initializer to this. And this is going to be init with items. And we're going to say self. Let's actually first create items on here, which will be private items. And we're going to say items, self.items equals items. And we're going to say super init with nib name nil and bundle nil. You'll see this error is going to pop up here because we need to add this other required initializer. So hit the error and hit fix and it'll put it in there for you automatically. And now all we need to do is set up a basic table. So essentially what we did on the other controller. So here I'm going to go ahead and create a table view. I don't know why autocomplete loves to just autocomplete the wrong thing half the time. So we're going to say table view and we're going to create a table in here and we're going to return it. And we want to make sure we register a cell. So I'm going to register a basic UI table view cell with ID cell, like so. And let's see, we want to add this as a sub view and view to load. 
So we're gonna say view, add subview, table view. We're gonna set the table views delegate and the table views data source to self. And then we are going to uh, conform to both of those protocols. So UI table view delegate, UI table view data source. And once again, there are two minimum required functions for the data source which is number of uh, rows, and that's gonna be items.count. And again, items is what we passed into the initializer. Cell for row at index path is going to be a cell, and we're gonna DQ this cell with the cell ID we registered for the given index path. And we can say cell.textlabel.text is the given item at the index path position Finally, we're gonna return the cell. And when we tap on the cell, maybe we just wanna print out whatever we tapped on. So we can print out the given item that we tapped on at the position. And don't forget to do a deselect on the given position so your animation actually deselects the row. So let's go ahead and hit Command R to run. And you'll see nothing is still happening when you tap on any of these. And the reason is we set up this list view controller but if we actually pop back to our original view controller now, when we select on one of these uh, categories, we're gonna create a view controller and it'll be a list view controller. We're gonna use our custom initializer and we're gonna say we're gonna, that we're gonna pass in category.items. We can say vc.title is category.title. We're also going to now say navigation controller push vc animated is true go ahead and hit command r and let's see what we get so we've got this list of categories here and if i tap on fruits the first thing you notice is well we change screens but we have this black uh, background which is not great so you can't really see anything so let's uh, come into view to load here and let's set a background color and we're going to say it is the system background the other thing you notice is you don't really see the table. And the reason is actually not the background. The reason is we never gave this table view a frame. So we're gonna override view did layout sub views. And we're gonna say the frame of the table view is the entirety of this view controller's view. So now when we tap on fruits, we actually get the list of fruits that we had in items. Similarly, we can tap on any of these other ones and we get an associated list showing here. So what's really cool about this approach and pattern is this list view controller is super reusable. So list view controller essentially just takes in items in the form of a array of strings and it shows them in a list. So as an example, let's say we select on one of these, right? So let's say in did select here, we're actually printing out uh, way down here, whatever thing we've tapped on. But let's say we wanna show another list. So if you take a look at the app, like Apple's settings app that's built into your device, they have uh, different lists that show. So let's create another list in did select row uh, in the list view controller. And this is gonna be another list view controller with items. And let's just create items in a for loop here. We'll call it more items. And I'm gonna say more items is a array of strings. And I'm just gonna create a for loop of zero to a hundred. And we're just gonna append in item with the X value. And then now what we're gonna say is uh, another list title is more items and again navigation controller push vc animated true so let's try this before we wrap it up so it looks like we have an error in here the error is we actually didn't call it vc we actually called it another list so let's make sure we update that there and now when we tap on those fruits we get to apples right, this list uh, with apples, banana, oranges, and we tap on one of these, we get even more items. 
And what's interesting about the way we set this up is you can keep tapping and it keeps going to another list. Uh, and as a list view controller is basically super reusable, which is what I wanted to illustrate here. But actually these are all different view controllers. So we can keep going back to the very beginning. And you can imagine based on different data that you're passing between the tables, you can change up your list and show the user different actions. Um, and yeah, that's basically how a lot of apps set up a uh, list-based flow in their applications. So that said, if you haven't destroyed the like button already, make sure to do so. Helps out the channel quite a bit. Comment down below if you have any questions. Uh, I love hearing from you guys, love answering questions, so don't hesitate to leave them down there. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.